Windsor Avenue after the wind operation. Cool Cody, the Paddy Power winner at 10, Midnight Shadow at 11, St. Sonnet, a market mover in the week at 12, Southfield Stone back today at 12, and Chatham Street Lad at 16. It's a huge betting race, and it's coming up live for you on ITV. We've already spoken about this man on the show. Mick Winters joins us, a real character of Irish racing. Is this going to be a win for Ireland in this race, Mick? Well, we'd love to be representing Ireland if we want to claim that. Um, he's in great order. The ground is very safe. And, you know, I hope he accounts very well for himself. He's two from two in handicaps. Do you think he still is ahead of the handicapper? He's not probably ahead of the handicapper, but he might keep going with the handicapper. I'd say that he's improving and, like, he's an eight-year-old, but he's 17, one or two. So we are expecting a very good run out of him, but I'd say from the last up is where it's going to try him. Like, you know, he likes a gradual pull home. This is probably tough, a tough ask, but look, we're hopeful a very good run. And rumour has it that you've been trying to sell Matt Chapman some horses already today. Oh, Jesus, it travels quick. I told him Hector, I couldn't think of the other comedian, I suppose. Hector and himself, they'd be a great start. But um, someone told me that he's very tight in the money, so... <laughs> he <laughs> sure is. Mix, so Mick, be nice. Great to see you over here. Best of luck. Yeah, thanks very much. Around of the front, Master Tommy Tucker is going to be prominent, but the market mover late on is Good Boy Bobby into six and a half to one. The Good Boy, as one or two shoes just checked down at the start. Sipage at nine, Saint Sonnet, a big market mover at ten. Defending champion, you could argue, Cool Cody trying to be the full force to do the big double, the Paddy Power Gold Cup and the Caspian Caviar. Ten to one, Windsor Avenue quite weak now at twelve. A little delay yet at the start, but this is a race that the delay doesn't matter because there's so much to talk about so with the threat of low sun an early start with a caspian caviar gold cup in the company of richard hoyles yeah we start with a bang don't we? the caspian caviar gold cup field at the two and a half mile start being called in in the center of the race course where they'll jump three fences in that first line and they jump away Master Tommy Tucker is one of the first to show, and also Chatham Street Lad is prominent with Cool Cody, Southfield Stone, and Drum Connor Lad as they rise at the first. That marker's over it were Huntsman's Son and also Good Boy Bobby as the field make their way towards the second. Cool Cody, red and yellow, on the outside of Master Tommy Tucker as they take fence number two. Once again, they are all over that safely. Southfield Stone is prominent on the outside in the pink jacket. Sapage is just behind the leading group as they make their way on towards fence number three. Cool Cody rises in the lead, took a little bit of a chance with it, and a mistake by Chatham Street Lad has dropped him back to midfield. So now a fairly long run and a swinging left-hand turn before they leave the ground again, and Master Tommy Tucker for Harry Cobden is on the inside of Cool Cody and Adam Wedge. They're being tracked by Midnight Shadow Sapage and on the outside the grey Southfield Stone. Drum Connor Lad is wide on the course, being tracked by Windsor Avenue and the keen running champagne mystery amongst horses. Then Chatham Street Lad in midfield with Al Dancer. A militarian comes next. They had Annie Mack, Al Dancer the grey, two thirds of the way back through the field. Back markers early on a Saint Sonnet, and also towards the back of the field is Huntsman's Son as they take the first of the fences up the home straight. Cool Cody it is who leads on towards the next plane one, which is number five. Cool Cody over from Master Tommy Tucker. And Champagne Mystery's gone and has brought down Roman de Sanam, hampered Saint Sonnet as well. Champagne Mystery was the faller. Roman de Sanam was caught with nowhere to go and uh, came down. I can see both the horses up on their feet perfectly OK. Uh, the rider's just taking a while to, to rise. Roman de Sanam's rider's up. I think they're both up now OK as Cool Cody it is leads them over the next. So Cool Cody has the advantage as they make their way towards the next. Just on his haunches is Nico de Boinville, but uh, Roman de Sanam's rider Harry Skelton is perfectly OK. Over that, Drum Connor Lad made a mistake and has rather lost his pitch, so they move away with around about a circuit to go. Cool Cody trying to get into the rhythm, but Master Tommy Tucker just pestering him slightly on the front end. Master Tommy Tucker is actually quite keen, and in many ways that's helping Harry Cobden ride him as well. He's just keeping hold of his head. Benatar right in behind there. He's very, very keen, Ruby. He is, Mick, but he's usually ridden at the back of the field. It's interesting that Jamie Moore is riding him as close to the pace as he is. He hasn't settled him, but he's a lot closer than he usually is. So racing on towards the next fence, Master Tommy Tucker, a plain one moving away from the stands, takes it in his stride. 
and they're all over safely. Huntsman's Son, Saint Sonnet are the back two. So Master Tommy Tucker and Cool Cody from Benatar, who races in third. With Night Shadow, Southfield Stone, and Drum Connor Lad has made ground again as they race towards the water jump. Up on the outside takes it in roundabout sixth place. Chatham Street Lad improving again on the inside has moved through with Annie Mack. Good boy Bobby is also on the move. Windsor Avenue comes next. Aldance are still with a fair bit to do as they're now three deep for the lead as they stepped over that open ditch. Racing towards a plain one and Benatar has moved right up on the outside on his return to press Cool Cody over the next with Master Tommy Tucker. And they really have begun to increase the pace here. Mistake by Sapaj Saint Sonnet has been pulled up at the back of the field before taking that fence. So racing towards the final ditch which is six from the finish. Cool Cody for Adam Wedge and Benatar for Jamie Moore. They are over the ditch ahead of Master Tommy Tucker. Midnight Shadow mistake by Chatham Street Lad. John Co Chatham Street Lad being followed by Drum Connor Lad in fifth and sixth place. Then Southfield Stone. Annie Mack comes next. Good boy Bobby towards the inside. Then Militarian as the leaders all stretch over that. Al Dancer is making a little bit of ground towards the outside there as Militarian makes a mistake and has moved through into fifth place alongside Chatham Street Lad. So running downhill with four fences to take in the Caspian Caviar. Out in the lead, it is Cool Cody looking for this big Cheltenham double. On the inside of Benatar, Midnight Shadow is third. Master Tommy Tucker from in fifth place. Chatham Street Lad in sixth. Huntsman's son has made some ground. Al Dancer is now on the retreat again in seventh, but he's trying to stay in touch. Annie Max trying to get involved. Then Drum Connor Lad, Militarian, good boy Bobby. And Southfield Stone has also lost a lot of ground. Three from the finish. Cool Cody runs down the the fence has the lead from Benatar Midnight Shadow Master Tommy Tucker is over in fourth place Chatham Street Lad for Dara O'Keefe and Mick Winters moves onto the heels now of the leaders and begins to close with purpose and this bunch of five are leading from Addy Mack then good boy Bobby as they spin the turn for home and race towards the second last Benatar hits Cool Cody but Chatham Street Lad on the outside is poised to challenge with Midnight Shadow they improve together and move through to press Benatar as they race towards the second last Master Tommy Tucker still there on the outside but didn't get very high there and was down on his nose and it's Chatham Street Lad who has moved through to lead by two or three lengths now from Midnight Shadow. Benatar's very tired then called Cody a big leap at the last by Chatham Street Lad. Midnight Shadow Benatar. Goodbye Bobby trying to stay on for a share of the places but Chatham Street Lad wasn't foot perfect but he's much too good on the day and he's striding clear to win for Dara O'Keefe and Mick Winters. Their first winners here at Cheltenham, they win the Caspian Caviar by a wide margin. Midnight Shadow second, Benatar will just hold on from good boy Bobby Addy Mack. Cool Cody, Master Tommy Tucker, Militarian finishes. So does Al Dancer and Southfield Stone, but they are the only ones to do so. 16 to 1 chance, Chatham Street Lad made a couple of scrappy mistakes, but when he improved, along with Midnight Shadow, running towards the second last, they were the two with momentum. By the line, there was only one with momentum. A wide margin win. Midnight Shadow you have to wait a fair while till he appears he comes through in second I think just hanging on for third was Benatar what a race he's run on his return goodbye Bobby next and those that are playing five places Annie Mack will be fifth across the line what a day for Mick Winters and Dara O'Keefe the colours of Vivian Healy Chatham Street Lad wins the Caspian Caviar so Michael Winters will be rolling in the mud. His horse has bolted up. Huge day for Cork and the man on board, Dara O'Keefe. Yes, Ed, a huge day for Dara O'Keefe. I just asked Dara, have you ever ridden an easier winner of a handicap than that? Oh, it was awesome. Like, um, you know, the one thing I thought just, might just let me down was his jumping a bit, and at times it kind of did today, you know. He just, he was just a bit green, like, and things, but saying that the third and fourth last, when I needed him, I gave him a squeeze, and like as I said, whatever Mick, told me, Mick Winters told me to do, he said just, just bide your time and keep something to come home, but he travelled like a dream, and as I said, he did make a little few mistakes, but when I wanted him, he was awesome. One of the problems for most of us is we wouldn't be able to actually understand what Mick told us to do, but I guess not an issue for you. No, like, and you know, when, when Mickey Winters comes over to, the, to England, like, you, he's got to be taken seriously because... When he has the ammunition, he's well able to train them, and uh, you know I'm very grateful to him for for giving me the opportunity and the owners and for everyone. You know, like we, we thought he'd run well, but we didn't think he'd do that. But it's brilliant. Win a race like that here at Cheltenham as big a moment as you've had in the game. Oh, definitely. Like you know, since I was a child, 
I remember watching Ruby Walsh and Tony McKay and Barry Garrity and everyone, you know, coming up that hill and like I always hoped that at some stage of my career I'd love to ride the winner here. So it's it's unbelievable and I'm very grateful to everyone. Getting back to the winners enclosure. Well done, Darren. That's not a bad way to have your first winner in Britain. How easy was that, Mick? Unreal. It was almost like he'd just jumped in a halfway because there was quite a few of them toiling. But this young man, you know, he has been tipped to be a future star and you never really can believe it until you've done it on the big stage. Well, it's fairly safe to say he's done it on the big stage now. It doesn't get any bigger than Cheltenham. Riding big handicap winners as well. Showed maturity beyond these years. And this is something they've been seeing an awful lot in Ireland. We haven't been lucky enough to see it in England for a while. But, you know, this is a young man who will enjoy this day. 16 to 1 the winner. Midnight Shadow, second at 12 to 1. Big run for Sue Smith. Good comeback from Benatar as well, who finished in third. We'll confirm the fifth and sixth because bookmakers were paying down as low as that as soon as we can. Before that, let's check what's coming up this afternoon. Paid six places, but the winner, Ruby, was emphatic. He was emphatic and was travelling the world from a long way out, Ed, but um, it was a stra not a strange race to watch. If you back good by Bobby at the very back of the field, your goose oh. was cooked early. Look at the height he goes at the first and again at the second fence under Darren Jacob. I don't know, did he get a fright or something to hit his eye, but it looks like the fences are on fire the way he's jumping them. Benatar switches out here on the run after the water jump and injects real pace into this race and it just spread eagles the field at the fence after the water jump. Watch how quickly the gap opens up to the rest of them. But Darrell O'Keefe, on your eventual winner, Chatham Street lad, all the way down the hill. He just sat off the ones in front, was never in a rush. He spoke about dreaming of riding a winner in Cheltenham. Well, he's obviously visualised how he's going to ride races here and he stuck to it because he was never in any panic. He timed his run and delivered his challenge at the right time, upside to the second last, commit down to the last fence, jumps it really well and strides away to win. A brilliant day for him, but it was a very well judged ride. And they say visualisation is a huge thing in sport, but he's obviously visualised how he's going to do that on many occasions. And you'd like what well, we were visualising here. Vivian Healy and his brother both here. The cheer was enormous. It was proper Cheltenham almost, uh, Ruby. And we, we laughed about the trainer at the start, but my word, he can train. Well, you were laughing about him. I was only trying to limit you. He, how come we said that? Miss United, Rebel Fits, etc., etc. Look, he's a thick Cork accent, but I'm sure Irish people struggle to struggle to understand some of the English accents just as much as he might call one. Let's hear from the trainer with Alice. <sighs> Meg, what a performance. That was electric. Congratulations. Yeah, well, uh, what do you call it? We were always saying that he was a big backward playing kind of a horse. But Jerry, Jerry Sweetman, the man that had Rebel Pitts, I heard him doing an interview after in Galway, and he said beyond his wildest dreams. So I'm going to quote him again. That's the way it felt like. You said beforehand if he won that you'd be rolling in the mud. Well, I might, I might still do it. <laughs> do you want to roll in the Cheltenham mud? I, I would love to. Go on then. Go on then. Here we go. Hey! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! Yeah, Brilliant. Fabulous. Well fabulous. done. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> mate, that's tremendous, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. He is a real character. I think there was a couple of uh, Cork lads. Was it the Donovan brothers a few years ago at the Olympics? That's right. Yeah. They were Irish lads who, who absolutely milked the fact that people did. They used to make it hard for people to understand their accents. He doesn't try and make it hard. <laughs> it is hard, but he's such a good brilliant. fella. He really, and a brilliant trainer. Clearly. And there is the picture that will be on the back yeah, pages brilliant. of tomorrow's <laughs> paper. No doubt about it. Behind you, you might have seen the owners, the boys. Are here. Alex, I think, has got them. Well, there's a pretty exciting team from I think it's safe to say Mayo, lads. Congratulations. <laughs> well done. <laughs> the West Mayo from the double. Sam and. Who? Sam next week. Next week, next Sunday, please, guys. But a winner here at Cheltenham. I mean, you boys, you clearly had a bit of confidence behind this horse. Uh, we had, we had, but very few people had. It's a big ask to come to Cheltenham, win a top race like this, the, the December Gold Cup. Fantastic. Massive prize. We can't believe it. Everybody said we're a bit mad in the head, but we, we are a bit mad. But there's only one way to prove it, that's to come here and win. Boom! And you said before, you said you were chatting to Dre, you said, if you're not in, you can't win. That's it, that's <laughs> it. And they said, you know, with COVID and everything, it's uh, difficult. Everyone has to go into quarantine when they go back. So it was a big ask for everyone to come, including Michael, the trainer. He's fantastic to come, you know? And to come out here, and uh, now when he goes home, he has to stay indoors till after Christmas nearly. 
So it was great for the man to do that for us. It's not every trainer that would do that, you know, I, I would anywhere in the world. That being locked down with you lot for the next two weeks is going to be it's so going to be very good. <laughs> Come over and enjoy it. Okay, well, You're invited. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Up my own. Fantastic. The soul of this great sport is coming back. Spectators returning, and we had a trainer who was happy as a pig in muck. <laughs>